Hey everybody, Rob here at eTrailer.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Demco High Power Diode Wiring Kit on our 2003 Jeep Wrangler. Now our diode kit is going to allow us to use the signals from our motorhome and transfer them to our Jeep's actual taillights. That way when we're flat towing our Jeep, everyone around us knows whether we're changing lanes, slowing down, and we have our taillight function when we're driving at night. Another nice thing about our diodes, aside from the fact that they're going to get us our signals to the back of our Jeep, they're also going to protect our Jeep's electrical circuits because they're going to prevent any kind of back feeding or anything like that if there were a problem on the motorhome end. The diodes are only going to let electricity flow one way, so they're not going to allow any kind of back feeding or problems to occur. And whenever you are flat towing, it is important to have your lights and your signals at the back because, again, we all want to know what's going on around us and we want to make sure the people driving around us know what's going on. Now, there are different ways to get those signals to the back. One way is magnetic lights. We've all seen those where they're usually stuck to the top and they do work, but that's going to require us to run a wire all the way to the front of our Jeep to the back of our motorhome. So that just means that we're going to have a wire dangling in the wind, potentially scratching the paint, getting caught on something, and we're going to have to set it up and take it down each time. The benefit of the diodes is, is once they're installed, we don't have to worry about it anymore. And they're not going to affect our Jeep when we're driving it like normal. All the lights are going to work when we're towing, and then the Jeep's lights are going to work normally, just like they would from the factory when we're driving around. Another downside to the magnetic lights is, let's face it, we have a soft top on our Jeep here and there's only so much metal that we have to put the magnetic light on. So we'd end up having to put it on the body somewhere down here and we really couldn't put it up here because there's no metal to attach it to. Now there is a different option as well as a bulb and socket kit, but that's where we're going to require us to drill a hole into our factory tail light and put a separate bulb inside. Now that will bypass the entire electrical system, which is nice, but again, it involves us to drill a hole into our taillight, which can over time eventually leak and cause problems inside. So I personally like diodes because it's a one-time installation with no additional setup. Now the diodes are gonna come with most everything you need to get it installed. It's gonna come with all the diodes, connectors, and a good length of wire. We actually had quite a bit left over when we wired up our Jeep. However, the wiring is going to have a four pole flat connector on the end of it and I actually suggest upgrading to a six way because it's going to give you two additional circuits so if you have a braking system that has a monitor light or if you have a charge line you want to make sure your Jeep's battery is staying charged while you're towing it, the six way is going to allow you to use those two extra circuits. And we chose to do that, we have a six way round on the front and actually using the Demco coiled cable. I like the cold cables just because, especially on tow bars that don't have the channels, it gives you the slack you need when it needs to extend, but whenever we don't need that extension, it coils up nice, nice, neat little package. It's going to prevent it from dragging the ground and getting damaged, and again, that six-way is going to provide us those additional circuits if we need them. And our Demco kit does come with a metal socket which is actually pretty nice. It is silver, so it doesn't blend in very well, but again, it is metal. So over time, we don't have to worry about the sun making the plastic brittle and that lid opening and closing. It's not gonna cause any damage over the long run because it is metal and it is gonna withstand up to most of the environmental issues we may see, whether it's rain, extreme sun, or cold temperatures. The cord itself is gonna be coiled, so we'll have plenty of slack to get it hooked up and then again, come into a nice neat little package when we don't need all that length. One end is gonna be a seven way, it'll plug directly into our motorhome, and then the other end is gonna be the six way, plugging into the socket that comes with the kit. Now, as far as the installation goes for the diodes, it's actually pretty straightforward. We're just gonna run a length of wire from the front of our Jeep to the back towards the taillights, and then we need to splice in and make the connections. Now, it can seem a little daunting to some people, make them a little bit nervous, but rest assured, it's not complicated at all. It's a very straightforward process, and we actually did run into a little bit of an issue. This is an older Jeep, and most likely a lot of people have worked on it, and a lot of different things have happened. But that's not a problem, because we still went through and did all the testing we needed to do so that our diodes would work properly. In fact, let's go ahead and bring it in the shop, make sure you feel comfortable, and we'll show you where and how we tested everything, and even how we wired up the plug on the front of the Jeep. To begin your installation, you wanna start at the front where you're gonna be mounting your electrical. Now we have a spot on our base plate for our electrical to be mounted up, 
So I just went ahead and zip tied my wiring and kind of left myself a little bit of a loop here so there's enough to work with. Now you want to route this back towards the tail lights. So I ran my wire just across the base plate and then I went to the outside of the frame and went in between the base plate and the frame and came right over to the side of the frame here. Now there's a hole right inside the frame. So I took advantage of that and I actually started routing my wire inside the frame so it's nice and protected. Now an easy way to do that is if you have a coat hanger or a thick piece of wire, something like that, you can put it in the frame and feed it down until you can get to another hole in the frame and just keep leapfrogging down the way. So we routed it along the frame and again, right behind the front tire, there's a pretty large hole. It's not too far away, so I had my wire come out, pull the slack, feed it in, and continue to route it down the frame. And again, here's another hole that we used to kind of bring the excess slack out, go back in the frame, continuing along, kind of leapfrogging down until we came all the way to the back of the frame behind the rear tire here. And here you can see where my wiring came out. Now there's a couple different ways that we can get this hooked up. One way is that we can actually remove the tail lights and we can pull all the wiring out. However, on your Jeep, you should have this liner here that's part of the wheel well liner. Now ours is actually missing the fasteners that's holding everything in place. But if you grab it, we can pull that panel down, kind of bend it out of the way, and we can get access to all of our taillight wires through this opening. Now you're gonna notice that there's quite a few buck connectors and splices already made, and that was from the trailer wiring that's on the Jeep, which kind of helps us out a little bit because it is gonna help identify the wires because the trailer wiring's already hooked up. So if we know that it is hooked up correctly and it is working, the left turn signal, the right turn signal, and the taillight wires should be identified for us. But we're gonna go ahead and test our wires to make sure that they are correct and we can identify the color of wires on the Jeep side that we need to connect to. Now on the end of your wire where you're gonna have that four pole connector, we don't need that because that's actually gonna be tying into the wiring. We're not plugging it in. So I went ahead and cut the end of it off but now we need to separate each one of our wires as high up to that last point as we can so we have four separate wires. Now once you cut that four pole off, you're gonna have a little bit of separation at each wire, which will help out because we can just grab the wire and start pulling. And again, going as high up as we can so we have four separate wires. So I'm gonna go ahead and split these until they're all separate. So at this point, I went ahead and turned my taillights on so that we can identify the taillight function wire color. Now you don't wanna have any turn signals, the brakes, or any other light function on so we can really isolate that signal and make sure we have the correct wire. And again, the trailer wiring is gonna help us out a little bit because our taillight function is working properly on the wiring, but we're still gonna test and make sure that it is the proper wire that it's hooked up to. So we're getting our signal from the black wire that has a yellow stripe on it. Now this may be a little bit difficult to see, but if we look inside this opening, there is a connector that we can see that our trailer wiring is connected to. But if we follow the wires up, we can see that it actually goes into the back of the Jeep and that's going directly to the taillight. So we wanna put our diodes and our connections as close to the taillight as we can and make sure that it's on the taillight side and not on the trailer wiring side. Now here over on the passenger side, we have the same color wire and right above the frame, we actually have quite a bit of wiring that's gonna go up. But as you can see, there's not really an opening. It goes over the frame and up higher to where we can't see, but we can make our connection on the passenger side using this bundle of wire. So now we're gonna lower our Jeep back down, turn the taillights off, and we're gonna get an extra set of hands so I, we can identify the brake color wire on each side. Now on the left side, we're getting a signal from the green wire with a red stripe on it. 
So that's gonna be our left hand brake and left hand turn signal wire since our Jeep uses the brake and turn signal off of the same wire. And we're gonna go over to the passenger side and verify the color of wire over there. And over on the passenger side, the brake light wire and the right turn signal wire is gonna be the brown wire with a red stripe. Now again, you can find this bundle of wire right underneath the rear bumper, just underneath the taillight here. So it's a really easy spot to access all the wires we need. And whenever we're done making our connections, we can tie everything up and it's out of the way and we can make sure it's nice and protected. So to start out, we're gonna start with our left turn and our brake light wire, which is going to be the red and green wire and again, you wanna go on the taillight side of the wire if you also have trailer wiring installed. Now, it may be a little bit difficult to see just because I had to have my hands in here and it's up inside the body here, but what we wanna do is cut this wire in half, and then we wanna install a blue spade terminal on each end of the wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then we'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Now that we have spade terminals on both ends of those wires, we can grab one of our diodes. Now the diodes are gonna be labeled. You'll see that there's two in terminals and one out terminal. The out terminal needs to go to the tail light or the terminal and the wire that's closest to the tail light and the one furthest away is gonna to go to the in terminal. Doesn't matter which one at this point, we just need the one furthest away or towards the front to go to the in and the one closest to the tail light to go to the out. You just plug them in like this. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but that's a good thing. We don't want those terminals slipping off. And the other terminal that's open, we're gonna take our yellow wire, since we're on the left-hand side, and we're gonna trim off the excess, route it up to this section here, and install the other spade terminal. Just strip back the end, slide it onto the wire, and we'll crimp it down. And we'll take it. I'm just going to plug it into the other end of the diode, making sure that it's seated all the way on that terminal. So we should have a yellow wire and the factory wire going into the ends and then going out to the taillight. For our taillight wire, that's gonna be the brown wire. The diode's gonna hook up exactly the same. We'll have the brown wire going to the end, and then the farthest section of that black and yellow wire will be going in, and then the one closest to the taillight will be going back to the taillight. So we're gonna go ahead and get this one in place as well. Now I like to give myself a little bit of excess. You can see I gave myself quite a bit with that yellow wire. I'm also gonna do that with the brown wire, give myself quite a bit of excess. I'm gonna cut the wire so we can get ready to hook our spade terminal in. However, we wanna hold on to the excess brown wire because we are gonna be using this to go over to the passenger side. But we'll go ahead and strip back the end and get our spade terminal crimped in place. And we can grab our diode and get all the terminals hooked in. Now the reason why we held on to the excess brown wire is because we actually need to attach it to the existing brown wire here so we can jump that signal to the passenger side tail light so they both come on at the same time. Now in your kit, they are gonna provide you with a quick splice and the way these work is you could just slide the wire into the quick splice, take your new wire, slide it in place, and then you'd crimp it down. Now this will work perfectly fine, but I would like a little bit more protection for my wires. So instead of using the quick splice, I'm gonna replace it with a buck connector, a heat shrink buck connector, and just splice it in. So I'm gonna cut my wire, strip back all three ends, and combine them into this buck connector, have a little bit more protection, and prevent any kind of corrosion or anything happening to the wire inside. So strip back all the ends of our brown wire. 
I'm going to combine two of them together. Take my buck connector, put them in one end. And that's also a reason why I'm using this size buck connector. It's actually for 12 gauge wire, but it's a lot easier to get two of these wires inside rather than trying to cram them in the proper size buck connector. We'll crimp it down. I'll take the other end, put it into the open end of the buck connector. It's going to take a heat gun and shrink down that connector. If you're using heat shrink buck connectors and you're shrinking them down, I do want to mention if you are using an open flame like a torch or a lighter, anything like that, you're going to be extremely careful not to burn or char the connector or the wires. So now we want to take our newly extended brown wire and the existing green wire and we're going to route them over to the passenger side where we tested our wires and make the connections over there the exact same way we did with these diodes. Now I do want to mention when you're routing your wiring, obviously we protected the wire going through the frame. You may not have that option. You do want to stay away from the exhaust or any other moving parts that may damage the wire, but we're going to go ahead and route these over there and make our connections. So I went ahead and routed my wire over the fuel tank so again it would help protect the wires. And I used that same method of using a pole wire to get them from this side to the other side. Here you can see the wires coming over the fuel tank and we made our connections just like the other side. Now we do have one more wire we need to connect and that's going to be our white wire. Now this is going to be our ground so they do provide us with a ring terminal as well as a self-tapping screw so we can find a nice solid piece of sheet metal and make sure it's a solid ground. Now fortunately for us, our trailer wiring actually has a really solid ground going right into the frame right here. So I'm actually going to remove the self-tapping screw or bolt that's in there now and put my ground right here so we can prevent having to put any more holes in the frame of our Jeep. I'm gonna pull that out. We'll trim our ground wire and attach the ring terminal. Now again, I kinda of like to give myself a little bit of slack so I can tuck everything away, tuck it up as high as I can. So I'll put a little loop in there, trim off the excess, strip back the wire and crimp the ring terminal in place. We can grab that bolt again and put both of the ring terminals in place and make sure that both of them are grounded. Make sure that our wire will fit. And then we'll reattach the ring terminal. Now whenever you do put in any self-tapping screws, especially for grounds, you want to make sure they're secure that ring terminal isn't going to spin, but you also don't strip out the screw itself. So now that everything's connected, I'm going to come back and clean up all the wiring. I'm going to tie up anything that's loose, and as well as all these exposed wires, I'm actually going to come back, put some wire loom and some electrical tape on it to help protect it, and also kind of hide these colored wires from showing on the outside. And once you have everything cleaned up and you're satisfied with the way everything looks and that the wires are protected, you want to test the circuits and make sure they're working properly. So I'm going to grab my tester and run through the functions and verify that we are getting the correct signals back here. So if I turn my tester on, we can see that my taillight function is working, the left turn signal, my brake lights, and the right turn signal. Now we're not going to be using the four pole on the front of our Jeep because we're actually going to be upgrading to a six way so we have a few more functions available to us. So we're just going to go ahead and cut the wires as close to the connector as we can so we don't lose any slack. And we can get rid of the end of the connector. Now we can grab the socket and we'll go ahead and pull the rubber boot off. 
I'm going to take the wires, putting them in through the small end, coming out the large end, and you just push it out of the way for now. Now we want to strip back a little bit off of each one of our wires. Now if we grab our socket, if we look at the back, the terminals are going to be labeled. But you do need to pay attention to the direction of the arrows because they're not going to be directly in line with the terminal. So if we start at the very top, you can see the arrows pointing towards it. The top one is going to be LT for left turn. If we move clockwise, the next one is going to be RT for right turn. The next one is going to be labeled S. That's going to be your electric brake signal. Then TM for trailer marker. Then the large terminal is going to be your ground. And the center pin is going to be the auxiliary 12 volt power source. So if we go in the same direction, starting at this one here, or excuse me, starting at the top, it should be the yellow wire, then our green wire. We're not going to have one hooked up here. Then we'll have our brown wire and our white wire hooked up with our four pole wire right here. Now also for the terminals, the set screws are actually going to be on the side kind of recessed. So a precision flat blade screwdriver is going to be your best bet to get in there and be able to loosen those terminals up. So we just want to loosen that screw up. You can see inside how it's moving out of the way. I personally don't like to take these all the way out because they are very small screws and extremely easy to lose. So we loosen that one up. That's LT for left turn. So we'll take our yellow wire, put it inside the terminal. And I like to leave just a little bit of the copper exposed, not enough that it's going to cause any kind of crossing over arcing issues, but just so that I know that the copper is in there and the insulation is not going to cause any kind of connection issues. We want to take our screwdriver and we want to tighten down that set screw. Give it a quick tug, make sure the wire is secure. Now we're just going to go through hooking up all the wires to the corresponding terminal. We tested our socket according to the labels that we had it hooked up to and we found out the functions are not labeled correctly. So if you look at the top of the socket, that should be your trailer marker and going counterclockwise, the large ring terminal or the large terminal is going to be for your ground wire. Then next to that, you'll have your left turn and then your right turn. So at the one o'clock position, it should be open and the center pin should be open, but this is the correct way to wire it up. And it does work with the umbilical cord that comes with the socket. Once we have all the wires hooked up, I like to come back and I like to fill this entire area up with dielectric grease. And that's hopefully going to prevent any kind of moisture from setting inside and letting corrosion build up. Just get a good amount inside, making sure it fills all the holes. Then we can take the boot, we'll slide it over the terminals. Sure, it goes all the way over and then I'm also going to come back and I'm going to wrap the back of the socket, the boot and these exposed wires with some electrical tape not only to help keep it in place, seal it off but also to hide some of these colored wires here. Now to mount our plug to our base plate I'm just going to use a couple self-tapping screws that actually came with the base plate because the socket and cord did not come with any hardware. Let's get them lined up and take a nut driver and loosely secure one side. Make sure the other side is lined up. But again, I'm Rob here at eTrailer.com and that'll finish up your look at the Demco high-powered diode wiring kit on our 2003 Jeep Wrangler.